Hey everyone, this is Dan, and this is my collection of touch designer tools and small hacks, let's say. So basically in the past two to three years, since I've been dealing with touch designer more professionally, I have found a lot of shortcuts and a lot of small hacks that can help with workflow and keeping you in the creative flow, basically, as well as dealing with some small touch designer UX annoyances, let's say. And a lot of these things are, are very small, but in the long run, these small things can add up just a quick demonstration for example if i you know wanted to select this this render i would have to put down a select and then drag this onto the, the select instead i can just drag this hold alt and then release and then this creates a select already with the selected operator this works with you know also swaps and, and whatever another missing and much needed operation in touch designer is the ability to swap operators and with this toolkit we can do that if i select these two operators and hit alt shift s i can swap them or hit this button up here as well as um let's say that i wanted to put down a trigger but and this is actually what gave me this idea of operator templates is um i don't like the default values of the trigger chop and i always ended up tweaking them and instead I can define templates and while holding Ctrl and Alt and putting this down, I now have an option of a trigger with a decay or a sustain. And it's super easy to define these operator templates with any of the operators. And once you define them, you will have these little arrows, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. There's also a ton of other things. Um, one of the main thing is uh, this toolbar. Basically the design principle of, of these tools and this whole toolkit was that it's not a separate system. It's supposed to be um, seamlessly integrating with your touch designer experience and remembering a few hotkeys and knowing what these buttons do, but also, you know, once you hover over it, it tells you. With these things, you can really improve your touch designer experience and in the long run, save a lot of time that you can uh, spend on creating. Uh, it's going to be a long, long rundown probably, but I hope you will find these things useful. I spent a lot of time on developing these things, um, as well as others who have contributed. So, so yeah, stick around. And um, if you don't want to watch this whole video, there's a wiki um, with everything described. So if you prefer reading or just going one by one, uh, you can also check out the wiki. So let's start with downloading function store tools, which is the name of the project. As you can see, this is a GitHub project, which means it's uh, open source and it's free for everyone to use. Of course, if you would like to support me, you can always do it on Patreon, where I also have a lot of other things uh, that you might like. So the links are going to be in the description. This is function store tools, GitHub repo. And the first thing that you should do is go over to the releases section on the side. And you will find the latest release always here. When you click it, you will see this page where we can download either a TOF file or a TOX file. Currently, I'm supporting the Touch Designer 2022 and 2023 versions. So that's why there's a underscore 2023 uh, version. Let's download this TD default 2023. This is basically a TOF file that already contains function store tools so it is just a project file that already has the docs in it basically um this docs so if you have a project file that you that you already have and you're working on you can just download this docs file and drag it onto that project file i would suggest putting it in the root of the project so where the perform is for example and the local so this is where the function store tools should live And this is how the TD default project file looks like. It's a little bit different than the default project file. It already has a render network and obviously the toolkit and everything installs by itself. So you shouldn't have to do anything more than just dragging it onto a project, project or opening this. I also suggest setting this TD default project file as your default startup project file. So if you don't know, in edit preferences, you can set the startup file instead of the default example file, a custom file, 
and then selecting the tow file that we downloaded. Then whenever we start up Touch Designer, um, this project file will already be there. So this will be kind of a good template to start with and it makes sure that you know the toolkit is always there. There are some features, by the way, in the toolkit that synchronize between projects. So it's good to have this in every project that you're working on and I hope you will want to have it. Let's start with the start of the show operator templates, which I briefly introduced previously. Something that we do a lot of times, for example, is putting down a render network, uh, you know, render top, camera comp, all that. Um, instead, for example, with the operator templates, um, we can start placing down a render top. Um, but before doing the final click of placing it somewhere, uh, we can hold Ctrl and Alt. And then in case we have multiple templates defined, um, we can select, for example, orthographic um, render. And the same way, for example, what I found a lot of times that um, I would put down a constant chop and then a speed after. Um, and instead of that, now I have a base comp with a, with a slider that I can customize and the speed chop already there. Uh, similarly, um, if I wanted to, for example, have an LFO, I always found myself putting a math after and an all. Quick interjection why I might want to do this, because usually we want to collapse things into a comp, but sometimes it's nice to have everything laid out in the same level. And then, for example, with the S-curve, I always find myself looking it up, so I can just hold Ctrl Alt, and now I already have a lookup there uh, with an S-curve. And um, you can define these as you want and as much as you want. Um, I will show you how. Let's start with a simple one. Let's say that um, we don't like the default parameter values of the filter chop. Um, and I want this to be always 0 0.2 when I, when I put down a filter. So I can you know, set this to whatever I, I want uh, and just drag and drop it onto this icon up here, uh, this little database icon. And once I did that, if I look at the filter again in the OP, OP create dialog, now we have these three little um, dashes or whatever you call them, which means there's an operator template um, defined for this, for this operator. So now next time I, I want to put it down, let's say edit after this, um, filter, and when I would do the final placement, I hold Ctrl and Alt, and now this has 0 0.2 already there. And let's do one more. Um, let's say I want a new kind of noise top template um, with kind of different values that I, you know, maybe you found that you end up tweaking the noise in, in a specific way, and you just love that Love that noise, you know, and maybe it already has apps time dot seconds there, which we will also um, do a workaround for. But let's say that this already has this expression, so I will just name this noise uh, harm, like noise harmonic, um, and whatever I name this will have uh, will have a meaning later. So I'm gonna just drag and drop it onto this icon, and next time I put down noise, I just hold Ctrl and Alt. It's important that you don't hold Ctrl and Alt before clicking onto the operator, just when you are about to place it down. And now you can see that there's now three, because I had already two uh, noise top templates, and now there's this new noise harm, which is identical to this one. But I could also choose my other ones, so and I could add more and more and yeah, endlessly. So I can just drag and drop this here. And now this is available. And what's cool now is if I want to save this, um, then I just need to middle click on this operator templates. And now it says you are about to overwrite your templates. Okay. 
and it also says that there's already an external um, template docs that exists and I will override this. So this means that all the projects that I that have um, function store tools will now have this shared operator template. So I open another project and the same templates that I saved will be available there, which I find to be super useful. So this is operator templates in a nutshell, um, but there's more. You can also add operator templates with just right-clicking on an operator. Let's say that I want to do something more intricate with the analyze top. So I can, before uh, putting down a, the operator, I can right-click on any operator here and edit templates. This will open a new window, uh, which I will try to resize. So this will uh, open a new window. By the way, you can also open this window by just left-clicking on this op open templates um, button. And this is all our template definitions here. So I was in analyze top before, which is here. I can uncook this if I want. Um, so basically for each operator, there is a comp here that gets created. So for the analyze top, I already have something here, which I packed into a base comp because it contains more operators. Um, so what it means is if I want to put down now an analyze top, it puts down multiple operators after it. So if I want to define one of these, I simply collapse it into, um, let's add an all after it. I collapse it into a, a component as I would normally name this analyze max. And I will put this to operation maximum pixel. Cool. And when I want to add this to my operator templates, I just copy this. Again, navigate back to the edit templates and paste it here. I suggest uncooking uh, these. And then the next time I want to put down an analyze, I have now an option if I want to analyze the maximum. And now all these operators are put down. As the last example, let's take a look at the render top, for example. Uh, right clicking on render, edit templates. And then I can make a copy of this render top ortho, let's say. And instead of the funk, let's add a um, line material to this. And instead of the box, let's say we have a, a sphere. I don't know. Right, not ortho sphere line. Let's let's call it. So now we added a new template. And when I put the render, I can select this, and now we have it there. Of course, we can mix um, these templates in a way that now we have a collection of operators as templates in these comps. But if I just want to have a render, um, which is I don't know, it's just you know whatever, um, with no aliasing and already you know, uh, 4K resolution, render 4K. I can also just add it here if I want. And now it's going to be there. So yeah, I hope it's uh, easy enough to define these and, and use these. And I hope you can see the value that it can really save a lot of time and make you a little bit more organized. Um, even though we are doing kind of the opposite what you, we should be doing, because you know usually um, organization would mean that you collapse things into components, but sometimes you want to have things in, in one level. And in that case, um, using operator templates can be useful, but also just in the case of, you know, what I, what I started with the trigger uh, chop, just changing the default parameters of certain operators is already, I think, a big uh, time saver.
One last thing before finishing this part of the video. I want to point out that the plat now has a search function. If you type anything in here, it will search your plat. You can also uh, hit Ctrl, Shift and F, and that will um, focus this, this uh, text field here. So I can hit Ctrl, Shift, F and then start typing whatever. In the next videos, we're going to take a look at what's hiding in the new toolbar, as well as other things that are not seen in the toolbar, but just as useful. So I hope you will stick around for those videos.